Hello beautiful people, I'm Rach Phoenix and in today's video we're going to be talking about being ungrateful. If you haven't already, go ahead and click the subscribe button and click the bell so you can get notified every time I upload a new video. I've been thinking a lot lately about why I experience so much fear, anxiety, and guilt expressing my emotions, trying to dissect where that comes from so I can get a better understanding of myself and also unlearn that, you know, like I want a life in which I am capable of expressing my mo emotions clearly, feeling that they're well received, and also just create healthier habits in my life. With that being said, I've been doing a lot of thinking about my past, thinking about what occurred that may have in some way affected my ability to not feel safe expressing my emotions. One of the things that came to mind is when I was younger, I remember whenever I would get my hair done, it hurt, you know? Um, obviously I have natural hair, and when you take a comb and you start combing from here versus like the ends, or if there are knots in your hair in general, and people comb through it, it hurts, you know? And I remember that when I would get my hair combed, I would start crying. When I would start crying, I would either get hit on the back of my neck or on my shoulder with the comb and told that I shouldn't be crying and to stop crying, you know? And moments like that kind of make me think, hmm, like when I was younger, hmm, what hurts more? Having my hair pulled and it being painful or being hit with a comb, being told not to cry, you know? and being hit with the comb felt more painful. So from a very young age, I had to kind of understand that although something is painful, don't say anything because when you do say something, you get confronted with something that's even more painful. And also it kind of taught me in a way that, you know, there's no reason in expressing my emotions because something bad is met with it or something worse. On other occasions, I remember when I was younger and I would get upset about, let's say, the way somebody said something to me, their tone, um, the way it was worded, it felt condescending. Whenever I would speak up and I would say, I don't like that, or that hurts my feelings, it was often confronted with, you shouldn't let things like that get you upset, or is that something to get upset over? Like, it's not. And it kind of made me feel flawed in a way. like. Being told that constantly whenever I voiced my emotions, being met with it's not something to get upset over, it, it felt like there's something wrong with me, you know? For me to feel negatively towards the way somebody spoke or what they said, in my mind at this point it was just instilled in me, it was taught that it's not worth it, you know? It's not valid. Your emotions aren't valid, basically. I think in comparison, whenever I had a positive emotion, like being happy or any type of emotion that's on the positive side, I feel like that was well received. I feel like that was a good thing, you know? It, it was good to be good, I guess. But when I expressed negativity, when I expressed what was painful, when I expressed things that I didn't like, that wasn't well received, you know? Recalling moments like this makes me realize how much unlearning I have to do, you know? Because it makes me feel like, it, it adds to my anxiety and it makes me feel like whenever I express emotions about things that I don't like, it will be met with something that either invalidates my emotions or I will get hurt more with what I've said and I'm deserving of whatever hurts me more because it wasn't my place to say anything in the first place. And it sucks, you know? I'm learning more and more that it's important for me to make sure that I surround myself with people who understand my emotions, who validate them, who make me feel seen, heard, understood, and also people who communicate their emotions just as clearly. You know, I think it's important to realize that People aren't always going to feel good after expressing negative emotions. Whether you're the person who is feeling a negative emotion and wants to express it to somebody else, it's possible that whatever hurt you hurt you so bad that you still need time after that um, 
talk or conversation to feel better. And then on the other person's end, the person who's being told their actions are hurting the person that they care about, hopefully the person that they care about, they're not going to feel good, you know? But I think it's important for us to really realize and accept the fact that it's okay to not feel good, you know? What's important is that we do the work to improve our quality of life. We're up, we're understanding of each other, you know? Everybody wants to be understood, but at the same time won't put in the work to be understanding, you know? It's like, I'm gonna tell you something and I want you to understand me, but when you tell me something, nope, not here to hear it, you know? I don't, I don't want to listen to what you have to say, you know? Like, that sucks, you know? You can't have a relationship with somebody and have it so one-sided. So that covers the fear and anxiety aspect of it, but then there's the guilt, you know? started thinking more about where does this guilt come from and I thought about the moments in my life in which I felt like I wanted to say something but I didn't because I felt guilty. Kind of like to generalize those moments. There are moments when I I don't have a car, you know, so it's like I use public transportation, I use Uber, so when I need to get somewhere and a friend or a loved one is my means of transportation, and they consistently do that for me, I feel like if there is some type of way that they drive that brings me anxiety, that brings me fear, that doesn't make me feel safe, I have to accept it because if I don't, I'm ungrateful. <laughs> isn't that crazy? You know, isn't it crazy how, um, we're fed this idea of gratitude means not expressing your emotions for things that you don't like. It's like, why am I not allowed to say, hey, your driving makes me feel uncomfortable. Your driving gives me anxiety. I don't feel safe, you know? And then I feel like there are moments when you do voice that and it could either be well received and then after a while the person may go back to driving that way because that's just how they drive. Or someone can be like, well, you're ungrateful. I'm the one driving you. This is my car. I'm driving you where you need to go. I don't have to do this. And it sucks because it's like, when you're the person who needs that help and you don't know where else to get it, you kind of end up sticking or staying in this situation in which is bringing you discomfort. And then it's like, is it really worth it? In other cases, I think about, so let's say, for example, somebody's buying you groceries because you're unemployed and you can't afford it on your own. But then you start to notice that the person who's providing you the groceries is going through something else in their life at the same time. And then they start taking their anger out on you. Is it ungrateful for you to start saying, hey, I know you're going through a lot, but I don't like the way you're talking to me. It's like when I was younger and when I had situations like that in which somebody was helping me and then for some other reason, I'm sorry if y'all can hear that dog, but in other situations when somebody was helping me and let's say, so something separate from the help, um, I started noticing that they started acting very mean, you know, towards me whenever I would express to them that I don't like what they're doing, that I, I don't like their behavior, it suddenly turned into, well, you're ungrateful, or I'm going to take this thing away that I'm helping you with. And it's like, why, why, <laughs> you know? Why is it that I have to endure being through a space or in an environment or around somebody who makes me feel less than in some way in order to get this help that I need. You know, there are moments where I'm just like, like, I, and this also kind of plays into why I have so much difficulty accepting help because it feels like it's debt. It's like, why can't somebody just help me to help me because they're in a space to? Like, why does it have to turn into I owe you something, you know? Why is it that there's no space to express the things that are hurting us when we're still grateful for the aspects of whatever help that the person may be offering us in our life. 
Like, it, it's so toxic, and I want to unlearn this. I, I don't want to be exposed to situations like this anymore because it sucks to know that help at times feels like it has to come with the expense of either my mental, my physical, my spiritual health, you know? It's like, is that really help? Like, why why does there have to be a trade-off like that? Like, why does it have to result in some type of deficit for me? Like, why? Why? And I think this is one of those things where it's like, we should be more conscious of the words that we use. Because when I start thinking about the people who have labeled others as being ungrateful when somebody is actually trying to just voice the things that they don't like, I feel like it's possible that there's so many different cases, you know, but it's like the first case I think of is like if somebody puts a lot of their worth in being able to help somebody and they're able to help that person and then that person starts to feel uncomfortable with either their, I don't know, let's say I, I need to use two examples. Kim and Dan, right? <laughs> let's use two random names. Let's say if Kim is providing Dan with help and there's something about Kim's energy, the way she does it, something. There's something about Kim that makes Dan feel very uncomfortable and he doesn't like the way that she he is being treated by her. Why is it that when Dan says that, he's ungrateful? Like, Kim automatically says, Dan, you're ungrateful, you know? I think it's possible that, in some cases, Kim might be the type of person who puts a lot of worth in herself of her ability to help people. She feels like that is her life, her life purpose. She feels like that is when she feels the most loved and appreciated by others. And then from Dan saying, hey, I don't like the way you do something like this, and her saying that he's ungrateful, it could mean that deep down inside she's very insecure about herself and her ability to help. So instead, when Dan says, I don't like the way you do this, she takes it as, you're not a good helper, or your help doesn't mean anything to me. Where in reality it could mean Dan appreciates the help, he knows that deep down inside it's coming from a good place, but it's her energy, it's the way she talks to him, it's the way that she does whatever it is that she's doing. It may be aggressive energy, aggressive um, actions that makes him feel uncomfortable, and that's what he wants to change. He's not trying to say, or bel belittle Kim in any way, you know? And then there are other aspects where I feel like the person who may label, I'll use Kim and Dan again, you know? I think there are other aspects in which Kim could be the person who grew up around a bunch of people who never allowed her to express her emotions, who never allowed her to say when she doesn't like something, or when something's hurting her, or any of that. So when Dan comes along and he starts expressing that, She's so caught up in never having that space in her own life that she can't receive what Dan's saying because nobody ever received that energy or that expression when she said it. So she can't give him the space that she never had because she doesn't even understand what it's like to have that space. And these are the moments where I'm like, isn't it crazy how people hurt us bad, you know, like really bad, and that trauma sticks with us. And then, if we're not conscious, we pass that trauma on to other people and somehow we end up becoming the people that have caused us the most amount of pain. And that happens for generations and generations and generations and literally we're passing pain that was never our own. Those are the things that I think about and I'm just like, I'm not carrying anybody else's pain, <laughs> you know? I'm not doing this myself. I want a life that's my own. I want to live a life in which I express myself through peace, love, and light, and I want to give myself the best quality of life. But it sucks when you're surrounded by people who never had the space to express themselves in a healthy emotional way or have ever been received in that way. So when you try to express yourself, it's possible they may not understand it. It's possible that they never had that space so they can't ever give you that space. It's possible that so many things, you know, so many things may be possible, you know, 
but it's like at the end of the day like I I'm sick of thinking that I'm ungrateful when I simply just want to express the fact that something's hurting me and I need change to feel safe. I think we need to be a lot more clear about what we're feeling, you know, like with the examples that I just gave. I think it's important for us to understand what we mean, you know? It's like somebody may say, hey, you're ungrateful, but what they really mean is, D is the help not working? Do you appreciate the help? Or, um, I don't understand why you feel that way. I don't understand your emotions. I don't understand your reaction. It's like we go straight to labeling something and not giving space for understanding. And then we create this toxic behavior in which the person who's being labeled as ungrateful ends up going into the cycle in, this, in their life of constantly exposing themselves to people who don't receive their emotions in a healthy way or justify them or make them feel validated and then that person has a very poor quality of life and passes that on to other people through the way they talk and treat them. With moments like this I try to do my best to just understand that it's never really personal. Like I think that's the thing that really can be difficult to understand like especially when you're in a friendship with somebody and you see the way they're treating you it's like when you know somebody so well it kind of feels like we're close enough to not allow external things or external um or past situations to affect our friendship but it's like those are subconscious things that come up and that affect our way to interact with others and it's crazy because we don't even realize it we don't un like we don't see at first how these interactions these very small but consistent um moments that have happened during our um childhood have played a very big part in our ability to think clearly or see clearly how we're treating others and it's like most of all what I try to do is just be understanding of that, understanding of the fact that it's not, un that it's not personal, but also understanding of the fact that someone can never give me space that they never knew existed or never had on their own. You know, it's difficult for someone to understand your emotions and understand what you mean when you're expressing your emotions if they never had anybody in their life listen to their emotions or listen to what they're going through or sympathize or empathize with them. The moment that I do my best to understand that aspect of why someone may potentially not understand me or may potentially un um, label me as being ungrateful when expressing myself, I try to think more on the fact of, you know, if this person doesn't understand this aspect, I know it's something that's important and necessary for me in my life, and I need to surround myself with more people who understand that, who can speak from that healthy mindset, who can think from that area or point in their life because, like I've said before, accepting somebody for who they are does not mean that you have to continue to put yourself in a space that is uncomfortable. It's not worth it, you know? It, it's, it's like, just because you're helping me does not mean that I have to be your punching bag, you know? It doesn't mean that I have to be this person that drops everything and runs to you from the snap of a finger. It doesn't mean that, you know, when I can't, I still have to give you my everything, when I have nothing left, you know? It sucks. It sucks that we do that to each other. And I don't want to be another passer of pain. I don't want to be another person who is afraid to live their best quality of life because other people may not have developed yet or understood yet how to express their emotions or have had a space to express their emotions I think the best I can do is say hey you know this is what I need to feel safe but at the end of the day like it's not my responsibility to teach somebody how to do this 
because I'm sure we've all seen it before where it's like you can bring the horse to the water but you can't make them drink it you know and I can respect somebody's journey I can respect that something that I learned in five years may take somebody 15 years I can respect that you know people need time to feel comfortable learning the things that they need to learn or may not ever learn it you know I can respect that I can accept that but what I can't accept is putting myself in a situation that I don't like and causing harm to myself just because somebody may label me as being ungrateful or because of the title that I hold in their life. That's it for today's video. Bless up and until next time, sending out much peace, love, and enlightenment. Bye guys.